Hi guys, great to be here. <coughs> it's great to open the transportation mobility truck of the NOAA conference Tel Aviv. Uh, and I want to start, yeah, I want to start by giving you a challenge. Let's go back. Another challenge? Oh yeah, another challenge. <coughs> But that's one of the most fundamental challenge of transportation. And the challenge is if you take a city, a large city, millions of people, What is the most efficient way of moving all these people in the city? Now, let's take London as an example. It's 5 a.m. now in London. Streets are empty. Not many people are moving right now. But soon, one of the largest movements of people will take place, place. About 10 million people will move around the city. Um, this is Oxford Street. Millions of people are commuting. Some of them are going uh, to schools, going to tourist attraction. How do we go about to optimize that? You can see some people are using cars, some people are using buses. Here there are like 50 buses on Oxford Street. There are taxis. There are also many people just walking. How do you take a large city and optimize all the transportation of the city? How many vehicles do we need? Why does this vehicle is stopping there and not there, and why is turning right and not left and all of that? How does it work? So this is one of the really main core questions that Optibus is solving. Uh, I'm Amos, uh, co-founder and CEO of Optibus. I founded the company together with Eitan. Uh, we started just the two of us in the basement of uh, my apartment, and we are now 50 employees with offices in Tel Aviv and San Francisco. Uh, Pitango actually was a re uh, recent uh, investment of uh, 12 million A round. And as you saw, transportation is complex. So you would assume there is some supercomputer that is taking all the data in the city and optimize all the transportation. And what you saw there in London will be the output of that supercomputer, will be like the most optimal plan we have, right? That's probably the way that cities are currently optimizing their transportation. That is at least what I, I assumed. Apparently, by working with many cities all around the world, we see that the way that they optimize the transportation is completely manual. These are actually pieces of papers hanging on a wall. Each piece of paper is like a trip that needs to take passenger from A to B. And there are people standing in front of these boards, moving pieces of papers. Sometimes one piece of paper is falling down, and then there is no trip anymore. Uh, and that's the way they used to do it. Now, what we did with Optibus is we looked at it differently. And we said, yeah, let's, let's use advanced technology to solve that problem. So we developed a technology based on two core components. One is we take data, lots of data from the city coming from many different sensors, where vehicles are moving, where people are moving. We learn from that data. We use deep learning on that data. We create uh, machine learning models, and then we use optimization algorithms to optimize the supply that the city has to offer. Now, how does it work? We have the demand. Those are the people that need to move in the city. We have the supply, so a uh, different type of vehicle. And then, in the middle, we have our system that matches the together. And it answers the following questions. Some of the questions that it answers. How many vehicles are needed to move all these millions of people? What type of vehicle, right? Do we need, like, uh, a small van or a double-decker bus or maybe a tram? Um, can we use electric vehicles? If we do, how much it will cost? What kind of battery do we need? Where do we put chargers? all of these questions that operation has. Uh, all these vehicles in the city, they need to park somewhere. They need to park at night. They need to park in the middle of the day. Where do you park them? Do you put like a large parking lot outside of the city, or you put many inside the city? Um, how many drivers? How much they will get paid? And so on and so on. So hundreds of these questions are what is optimized by what we do. Now, it turns out that by optimizing city after city, we saw that actually we're only solving 10% of the problem. And that's because the other 90% that we can't really optimize are the private cars. 
This is uh, data from the US. About 90% are commuting using the private cars. We can't really optimize their movement. But this is really the mass of the people. That's how they go to work every day. And these private cars, these 90% are costing us a lot. They're costing pollution and they're creating congestion. The price for congestion alone in the US for one year is $300 billion. That's the price for people sitting in cars and waiting in traffic in congestion. $300 billion a year. And it's all, not only cost our, our environment a lot, it's also cost the individuals a lot. So I myself, I never, never owned a car. When I graduated from university, all my friends went uh, and bought cars. And I went to buy a car as well. And then I saw, you know, a car in Israel cost you about $1,000 every month. So that's like buying iPhone 10 every month just to get to work. And that's insane. So I, I don't use car, but many, many do. And they pay a lot of money for using cars. So it costs them a lot and it costs us a lot. And it's actually getting worse and worse. So this is the average commute time in the US. Currently, it's on 53 minutes total average of all the US, including those that live two minutes from the job. 53 minutes of commute time. So maybe the solution is in ride sharing, right? We are all in the ride sharing revolution. We have ride sharing Uber did and so on. We have carpool, so we, we are sharing our cars. Uh, we have car sharing, so we pick up cars like Zipcar and take them. We have bike sharing. Everyone is sharing right now. So if we share, we, we, we make things more efficient. But apparently, if you look at the global scale, this is just a very, very tiny part of transportation. And globally, the average passenger per vehicle is actually going down and down and down. So one, now we are, and this is data from Australia, but we have uh, other data as well. This is the, now we are in 1.06 passenger per car on average. This means 94% of the cars are driving with a single passenger. So all this sharing, but actually we're getting lower and lower. It, this line, if we keep uh, drawing it, it will reach one. When it will reach one, it's one person per car. That's it, no sharing at all. Now we actually think that this line will even go below one. So like average passenger per vehicle, actually less than one. How can that be, right? We need, you need a driver. So no, you don't have to have a driver. Uh, with autonomous vehicles, uh, currently the prediction that autonomous vehicle will bring that number to 0 0.6. So 40% of the time, these cars will drive empty. So if you don't do anything about it, we're just going to have more and more cars on the road and more and more congestion, and we'll, we'll not solve anything. But we think that autonomous vehicles, they bring up a huge opportunity. And that opportunity is that the 90% of cars that we can't optimize today, with autonomous cars that belong to fleets, we can optimize those fleets. So if we look back at the problem of what's the most efficient way of moving 10 million people in London, around London, but now not only using the public transit or taxis, but using also autonomous vehicles that are managed by fleet, now we can create a real efficient transportation system without congestion and reducing the time that we get uh, to work and commuting. So I want to end uh, by telling you a little bit about our growth. So as I said, we started two people from our, my basement, and we've been to just one city in, the, in, in the Israel. And we grew and we grew, and now we operate in five continents. And I'm really proud of a large team of 50 people that is being able to add one new city that is using Optibus on average every week. Now, by adding one new city, we mean actually optimizing transportation in that city. Real vehicles that are moving, not in virtual life, in real life. Um, yeah, so I'd like to thank you all for listening to my presentation. Uh, if you want to read more or hear more about Optibus, go to Optibus.com. Thank you.